So they, they really have a topic like etiquette or the way you act or something like that. <laughs> right, right. That makes sense. In America, we they have homeroom teachers. So in the morning, you've seen it in in movies or TV shows when you go to the students sitting in class, and the president will talk over the speaker and say, "Today, blah blah blah," and all the students don't listen, and then they. Uh, right, right, right. Exactly, right, right. That's, and that teacher in there is your homeroom teacher. But in Taiwan, you see every class they have is the same students for the whole time they're in school. Yeah. So from. Junior high school every single year, it's all the same students. So that dalsa stays with those students that whole time. And then the school holds this teacher responsible for how many of those students do well. The teacher gets rewarded or punished. <laughs> you see? And then some, yeah, I worked at another school. I even am supposed to go check on the students where they live. I have I, the school give me a form. I have to go to where they live and I have to fill out a form. Like, is it clean? Is it near a KTV or not? <laughs> and, I just, and I have to like write all these things down, you know. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> but when I was a PhD student in Taiwan, I also have a Daosu, but I don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> so even PhD, <laughs> even PhD have a Daosu, but I don't know who. So who's your who's your graduate Daosu? Yeah, you should not be Professor Zhen is your Daosu. Uh -huh. See, don't even know, you see? Oh, okay. No, so we don't even meet each other. Yeah, it's kind of wasting time, you know. Okay. All right, so yes, I do have a class next semester, and that is the negotiation class. So if you can take it, that'd be nice. It's not a small class. It's usually a bigger class. Mm -hmm. But we have teams, many teams, and then we play those simulation games. Okay? And the students always get very upset because the game is, is uh, easy to lose. <laughs> <laughs> negotiation is very hard. And if you want to succeed in business, negotiation is probably a very good skill to have. Because you, you, you negotiate, you can win something. And everything in business is about, about winning something. Okay, today what I want to do is I want to finish our book. So we're going to look at the final chapter of our book. Okay. And that's chapter... <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You have to look here and look at your book there. And that's going to be... Uh, chapter 5. So let me jump over to our book here. And we'll jump over to our slides. And after we finish the chapter in the book, we're going to look at your presentations from yesterday, which are much better than mm -hmm. the first time you made the presentation. Much, much better. Especially. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought Paul did really a good job. Paul was, <laughs> Paul was, Paul was quite a surprising guy. You compliment Paul every time he's not here. I think Paul needs compliments because he works so hard. You should compliment people who work hard. I'm surprised Paul took my class because you know I think English is hard for him. In our last class, I think it's quite challenging. That last class is also about pre English prison. No, the last class was um, society and marketing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like theory about things. Yeah. So we talk a lot. Talk a lot. Yeah, just. Also <laughs> Yeah, Eric was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eric is also crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he has some good ideas. He has some good ideas. So that class was all about theory and ideas and reading and, <coughs> and talking about things. Every, every week we're reading a book, an English book. And uh, yeah, so Paul, Paul did that and then he came to this class. But everybody did better this time than last time. Uh, I shouldn't say than last time. Everybody did better this time than the first time. And that's what's really good about presentation. If you videotape it, you can see how much better you get. Right? It's, it's quite obvious. You, you always get better if you practice. Okay, so t t today let's look at conclusions. And conclusions, of course, comes up at the end of your presentation. But why is the conclusion so important? Well, the conclusion is important because it's the last thing the audience is going to see before they leave. 
So it, uh, we talk about this thing called recency effect. What is this thing called recency effect? That means the last thing you hear is the thing you remember. It's kind of like first in, first out. You know, This is like last in, last out, kind of. It's the thing that stays in people's mind the longest, right? And so the conclusion is really important to help that. So what you want to do is you want to signal the end of the presentation is coming. In this presentation, I think every group did that pretty good. And now I want to summarize. And now is coming the end. And finally, that kind of thing. You need to sum up the points again, and we're going to talk about that. Conclusions or implications, especially if you're doing research. That's very key for research presentation. And then, of course, you can handle questions. Now, in our class, we're practicing with the video camera. It's kind of too bad we don't have people. I've thought about it. Shouldn't we have, like, the class, and then somebody presents, and the class can ask questions? But the problem is it's too much pressure. It's already hard to talk to the video camera. It's even harder to talk if the other students are here <laughs> watching you, right? So that makes it even harder. And then if people are asking questions, it makes it hard. So uh, we didn't really practice that very much, but it is important. And then, of course, you end the presentation. So if we think about this, a good presentation has a strong ending. It's kind of like a movie, right? When you, when you watch a movie, uh, it begins with a story. It has some ups and downs. But then at the very end, you want to say something very strong so that you make a good impression on your audience. This part of the presentation is your opportunity to get your main point to the listeners, to reinforce your main point, to really make it strong. And so you signal the ending in a clear way. I think, of course, today when we look at our examples, I want to point this out. How did each group signal the ending and what was the last, what was the last idea? that you sent to your audience, very important. Okay, now, how do we signal that the ending is coming? Let's look at some ways. Before I run out of time, let me summarize. Usually the word summarize means the ending's coming, so everybody starts listening. The ending's coming before I run out of time. And lots of times you can look at your watch with that to give people a very clear signal. To summarize the points I have covered, to summarize, and then you go ahead and summarize, in summary is even easier. In summary, this is a quick review of what we know. To summarize, to summarize the main points. Going over the most important points so far, so far, so up until now, let me summarize. Now, now, let me quickly remind everyone of the main points. Now, let me remind you of the main point. Although there is a lot I have not covered, now lots of people say this because the presentation is so short. Although there's a lot I have not covered, you now have the most important information. Let me tell you again. All this can be summarized as follows, all down to a main point, everything down to one point. Remembering the most important points, one, two, and three, Okay, so here are some more sentences we can look at. I think everyone did a pretty good job at this. The time is almost up. So, 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 so let me just say. Let me just point out. Let me end here. With those four points, I can now come to the conclusion. Now, I actually like this. Because remember, I think in the presentation, you have your beginning, you have your middle, you have your end. What's the hardest part? I think the hardest part is the middle. Because the middle is where we begin to get confused, the audience is beginning to fall asleep, you're getting all mixed up, and you, gotta, you have to give the main ideas one by one. So here's a good way to remind the audience. Four points, I just told you, four points, four. Now, let me have the conclusion. Now, I can move to the end. Let me summarize. It's a good way to transition. Although there is much more, I know you are all very busy today, so although there is much more, our time is almost up. I can't possibly cover it all, so let me just summarize. These are all great ways in English to signal the end. That's a basic review. That's the basic idea. Those are the main points, and now we can move on. And that's all time allows. We're out of time. Sorry, but let me remind you the main point. 
I really like these. These are really a great way to wind up. I've covered the basics, but time is up. I've covered the basics. I hope that was enough. As I come to the end, I want to remind everyone. As I come to the end, it is important to remember. Don't forget. We should all keep in mind. These are great little signaling devices that I often like to use. Okay, now, let's look at this kind of map of this ending. I like this, the, the way this looks. A presentation is improved by having a structure. Now, we've talked about a structure. We didn't call it a structure. We called it a system, remember? Your presentation needs a system, right? What is, what is the way you link things together? So we talked about the ice cream. We talked about the noodles. Remember, we need a system, some kind of system. Maybe you tell a story. Maybe you list facts. Maybe you give an award. Somebody wins an award, right? Somebody wins a prize. Some kind of system. And that's good. But the ending needs to have a structure. And so the ending is kind of special. What kind of structure is the ending we're looking at? First, summarize. Summarize the main points you just talked about. Why do you need to summarize? Because everyone will forget what you just said, right? They might remember the beginning. For example, if I was looking at um, the Sands presentation, I remember you were talking about Sands. Yes, I, I remember because your beginning is very strong, but then in the middle, I go, what, 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 what? <laughs> so now you say, let me, here's the main points, right? Here's the main points. Conclusions, right? This is what the main points add up to. There's three main points. What do they mean? What do they add up to? And this is, I think, when we look at maybe uh, Netflix is good at the conclusion. These things together mean what? What does it mean? It means you can get that video anywhere. Implications, right? So here's my main points. Here's what it means. Here's how they come together. Now, what does this imply? What does this mean for the future? What does this mean to you? I think a good example would be Amazon. You always like to say, what does this mean for you? You're good at that. What does this mean for you? In this case, you were talking about the ease of selling on Amazon and buying on Amazon. So that's the implications, right? And then question time. I'm sorry we don't do much of the question time, but question time comes up and it's always good. I've told you before, and let me repeat, it's a great idea if you know someone or you can ask someone that you don't know just to do you a favor and tell them a question to ask before your presentation. Mm -hmm. So you say, hey, when, I, when my presentation is done, can you ask me this question? <laughs> because if one person asks, everybody feels much more relaxed. If you, if you stand there and you say, any questions? And everybody's quiet, it kind of feels strange, right? So if you ask someone, he'll ask, and maybe that's enough, or maybe other people will then become interested to also ask a question. So question time is part of that winding up. So summary, conclusion, implications, question time. My main points, what do they mean to you, to the future, what will happen, and then are there any questions? Okay, so let's look at a summary. How do you do your summary? A summary is just like repeating the outline. Right? Just the main point. Heading one, heading one, heading one, heading one. Maybe heading two, heading two, heading two. The main points. It's a good idea to take the outline. Now, who was it last time? Yesterday when we were doing the presentations, somebody had their outline on the paper. Was it Alice? <laughs> Did you have a paper with you? Eric. When you were? Alan? Eric. Eric? Yeah, I throw it away. <laughs> At the end, you did that. <laughs> so, remember, we said it's okay to have an outline, but I would suggest not a piece of paper, but cards. Cards. Yes, I put a small card. Right, Pen small cards. Right, right, right. They're called index cards. Index cards. And they're great because you can, you can put an outline on them. You can have each card has one H1 and one H2, and you just move them around, right? But a piece of paper doesn't look very good. Also, a piece of paper is big, so it stops people from seeing you. 
and it doesn't it doesn't really work well it doesn't have that kind of outline to it so if you have cards it's perfect for doing your summary because you can just stop and look at it and say let me remind you these were the main points I just talked about one two three and you can look at your card it's quite okay people understand that during this review you may want to simply give one or two sentences to remind the audience what is the main point it can also be helpful to use some phrases showing how each topic fits into the presentation what does this mean this is a little bit different right you can just say point one point two point three right you save time you save money you're more productive right you can just say that or you can say you save money by spending less right you're more productive because this helps you get your work done twice as fast you can add a little bit to remind them how did that happen okay let's look at some summary phrases this study began with three research questions why did I say three because those are my three h1 levels right those are my three headings the five most important market opportunities are right five in this presentation I've introduced three main issues three reviewing the points related to our problem definition we have first something second something third something and last to date until now our company has succeeded in a number of markets including number of markets maybe I had two or three those are my main points as you can see lots of people like to use this as you can see as you can see this new product has many benefits including one two three <coughs> let me remind you one two three the most important facts include one two three doing three years of research we year one year two year three so each one very clearly shows us I'm confident our firm can supply the production you need as I just mentioned point one point two point three although there are many important assets we could have we could have measured we concentrated on one two and three so each one of these are phrases that help us to focus on what are our main points here are some emphasizing phrases that we can commonly use and it is this point that is most important to our future for example maybe I say there are three advantages to choosing our company number one you save money number two you save time number three you're more productive and this more productive is the most important point you see, this way you remind them and then you focus on one that's very common here we saw the importance of our employees to improving efficiency employees key point this remember was the source of over half the firm's profits this 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 thing this information cannot be ignored cannot be ignored this so this is the key point although I did not include many details this issue has been examined in great detail by our team this 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 thing I just said many have commented that this issue is the source of many financial problems this so we can use the word this meaning the thing I just said what did I just say this here is where we spent most of our effort on this problem I just said so I just thinking could we say um, this problem this point this idea this advantage could we say that 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 no we say this because in English this meaning right now I just said it this if I said that it sounds like something far away <laughs> this this point this is the most important point this is the key point this is the reason we're profitable this is the reason for our success this is the main problem this is why you will enjoy our product okay let's look a little bit at uh, a map like this maybe you've seen this kind of thing before okay Get my mouse up here again concluding after summarizing the main points now is the time to state your strong conclusion and the conclusion should not exactly repeat your summary 
but rather it's a very short list easy to go into the brain easy for the people to hear this and then they remember so it's the last thing so how does a conclusion work a conclusion works like this it uses logic step by step to build up and how do we build up just like this here's my point here's my point here's my point here's my conclusion so this point plus this point plus this point it's obvious this is easy to see right so we say point one it walks like a duck point two it talks like a duck point three it looks like a duck so conclusion it must be a duck right <laughs> that's the way we usually use the logic walks like a duck talks like a duck looks like a duck it's a duck so by making your presentation conclusion very clear I told you point one I told you point two I told you point three so it's a duck you see it's obvious everyone can see that it's easy to see so for your conclusion you may use some small notes I always think it's really good that when someone's speaking they have some index cards I think it looks very professional because they take a moment and then they think about it or sometimes you can see in presentations people will say the most important point is last year's revenue and they take out a note card 52% increase 52% <laughs> but you see if they take out a big piece of paper and they undo it and all this that's not the same feeling you see so using an index card or a small small notebook is maybe but a big piece of paper no way it's too messy holding notes gives the audience a feeling that the information is important systematic and detailed right if you're just saying the information do you really how do you know that if you're reading it it sounds like wow it's really official it's really something detailed but be sure to keep eye contact so you take off the note you don't want to take the note out and then turn around and start reading it right but you rather looking at the audience so index cards are great for that really helpful let's look at some concluding phrases so remember we want to say looks like a duck talks like a duck right walks like a duck for these reasons I have concluded that there is no doubt there is no doubt <laughs> you see that's people like that. there is no doubt that these findings support as we have just seen the evidence points to you see how the the in the English just flows very easy as we have just seen it's obvious we just saw it you just you just saw that it's obvious everybody can see that obviously the facts show obviously the facts show no s while I have studied all possible variables it now appears that we conclude I've studied those things and so the conclusion unquestionably <laughs> kind of like this word it's a fun word unquestionably you want to practice that word with me do you know that word <laughs> I think it's a hard one unquestionably unquestionably Blee, blee, blee. Blee. Unquestionably. 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 It means there's no question. It's like it's obvious. There's no question this is true. Right? Unquestionably. Uh, isn't there another English word? Indubitably. Can you say that? Indubitably. <laughs> I won't make you say that. No, it's, <laughs> it's British English. Indubitably. <laughs> Same as unquestionably. Oh. Indubitably. It sounds Indian, doesn't it? <laughs> indubitably. Yes, yes, indubitably. Unquestionably, this historical review shows the importance of, should be, of moving into this market within the year. So, you see how it's like the duck thing? It's obvious, it's clear, it's unquestionable. Everyone can see it. Come on up here. Overall, the facts support although we don't have all the information it appears this it appears at this point that we must conclude that we must see that we must find in conclusion 
we are left with two valid options. Just two options, one and two. The evidence clearly points to, toward, the evidence clearly points toward a future research direction that centers on, the evidence clearly points to this conclusion. Without a doubt, these financial results show. These financial results mean, without a doubt, it's a good phrase, without a doubt, without a doubt. In fact, you can say that to someone when someone says that, right? Are you, uh, did you succeed? And you can answer that, without a doubt. <laughs> Although these findings are complex, I believe a trend can be seen that something on the whole we can now conclude these are a little bit weaker these are not so strong as unquestionably that's very strong these are a little bit more on the whole on average I feel completely confident now these are different than the other page these are more me right I feel I think in business these are usually much weaker you want to say it's obvious right Right? If you go to buy a product, no one will say, it's okay. If you ask the company, is, is this a good product? Well, it's okay. Right? <laughs> you won't sell many products if it's just okay. Right? It's, it's unquestionably the best. <laughs> right? But this is a little bit weaker. This was a little bit, um, maybe you feel more comfortable with this. After more than two years of research, we are now prepared to state. So we study for two years, now the conclusion. I've just mentioned some of the issues surrounding this company. In any case, it is now clear that, it is now clear that, each of the points I've just covered may not seem important. However, when taken together, together, we can conclude that, you see, it's this, this kind of logic coming together. For all these reasons, and many I have not mentioned, the conclusion is, Let's look at the implications now. So the implications is your opportunity to tell the listeners, hey, what does this mean to you? What does this mean for the future? And what can I draw out? So after a strong conclusion, we're ready to bring up the implications. Here are some implication phrases. If these recommended actions are taken, we expect a 10% increase in market share. This is a perfect example. So I tell you my idea, I tell you my plan, I tell you my main points. And then I say, it's obvious, it's unquestionable, we must do this. And if we do it, what will happen? We will increase market share 10%. Now, of course that's not, we, I have no way to know. It's an implication, right? And of course if your implications are very strong, then the listeners, the last thing they hear will be, oh, yeah, we better do that. Why? Because we'll get something good. Something good will happen. These findings can be used to design a much better package that consumers will like. That's success. With further research, we will be able to do something in the future, in the future. Now, with this information, we can take action by... You see? So, if you look at these phrases, these phrases are are like a lower tone. So previously I say something like, it's obvious. So it's, the conclusion is quite clear. And so you're very strong. But then here, then you, ta then you take it a little bit easy and you say, well, so if we do this, we'll increase our profit. If we do this, we'll have more opportunity. So just like a climax and then we slowly take it down, we tone it down a little bit, not so strong. The future can be different if we make some changes now. We make some changes. By continuing this kind of research, we will be able to find answers that may lead to a cure for some illnesses. May lead to a cure. So not so strong, just talking about the future. With this clear conclusion, it is clear that this company cannot go on without making some changes. Okay. Continuing with this approach, we expect profits to show increases over the next five years, so future. 
with this plan, I just showed you my plan, with this plan, we will have a win-win situation where both management and sh stakeholders, shareholders outside the firm are satisfied. It is clear. This is a really good, often used phrase. It is clear. It is, it is. If you say it's clear, that's much better than saying uh, it's obvious. If you say it's obvious, it makes people feel stupid. If you say it's clear, <laughs> it's just clear. It's clear. I mean, you can see it. It's clear. But if it's obvious, that means you should be able to see it even if you cannot see it. So something's wrong with you. It's obvious, right? It's like saying, uh, well, like saying common sense. Don't you know common sense? Don't you know? It's obvious. Can't you see that? It's obvious. <laughs> but if you say it's clear, it's not insulting at all. It's clear. It's clear. I mean, it's really clear. And, and you can say, well, I don't see it. I say, well, it's, it's clear. Let me show you. It's clear, right? With this information, we now can say without a doubt, without a doubt, that our human resource problems can only be solved if we do what I plan. In the next three months, we propose to find more support for the conclusions I just covered in the next three months. These conclusions force us to face important issues raised by the new competition, so the future competition, future market. Okay, we have some more practice sentences here. Let me just quickly jump over here looking for a few really good ones. The main point, finally, therefore, now, now, do, do, do. we've run out of time. A lot of people like to do this. Well, we're out of time. But let me remind you the most important point. Let me remind you the key point. I think you can see. Now you can see. Okay, question time. So, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, looks like a duck, dies. Very clear, right? So you have your presentation system, beginning, middle, end. The beginning, middle, end is like a story. We go through the whole story, right? Then, at the very end, we need to have another system. And this system is this structure. Then when we're done, everything's over. Now it's question time. So question time is actually makes people very nervous, I think. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> of course if you're working on your master thesis like you all are, question time is the key the key time, right? It's going to be the key time. So of course if you're doing your master present master thesis presentation um, the professors can ask questions at any time. I think they often do this. Hey, stop, stop, let me see that again, right? That's very normal. But the question time comes at the end. That's the key, the key time. So usually we do question time this way, and I think we've talked about this already in our uh, different kinds of presentations, right? If we remember colleagues, guests, senior, junior, equal, right? This is just like what we studied before about the format. This also relates to questions. So if somebody is your colleague in your company and they're above you senior, then any questions you must answer, right? Or else maybe you'll be fired, right? <laughs> On the opposite side, guest and under you, these questions may be avoided. And we're going to talk about avoiding questions in a second. On the other hand, guests who are above you, these questions should be answered. That would be good. The best would be to answer them. If you can't answer them, you need to tell them maybe when you can answer. Then opposite of that is beneath you, under you, but in your same company, these questions can be postponed, meaning another time. We can talk about that another time. Okay? So let's look a little bit more about this in detail. Question time is your chance to show that you're very confident. So actually, question time is a really good time for your presentation. But it's the time people get really, really nervous. Actually, the question time should be the time you relax the most. Because now is your chance 
to really show you know the information. Now, if you don't know the information, you're in trouble, right? Because then you don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. There's nothing you can do. But if you really know your information, you should feel, now it's question time. This is the best time. So I feel when, when you do your defense, when you do your dissertation defense, or when you make a research presentation, the presentation, beginning, middle, and end, those are actually the hard part. The question time should be the easy part because I feel like, oh, okay, now, what do you want to know? I'll tell you anything because I can, maybe somebody will ask you, how did you collect your sample? And you say, oh, no problem, let me tell you because I did it, I know, right? This is not something, I, I know this, right? Uh, when you analyze the data, did you correct for the different standard deviation? You say, oh yeah, I know, I know the answer, right? So after question time begins, many, pre many presenters actually relax more because I know, I know the information. By the end of a presentation, a presenter should feel confident. You should feel ready to answer questions. You should feel, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This will give a really good last impression to the audience. Now, it depends on the audience, right? Of course, if you're talking to your boss, and he's inside your, you know, from your company, your senior, that's your boss. If you're talking to your boss, of course, you'll probably be a little bit nervous. At the same time, if you answer the questions well, this gives you a good opportunity for the future. So you should feel, what? Well, this is good. I'm ready for this. So questions from above must be answered. Questions from people lower than you may be postponed. Questions from people outside who are guests and they're junior under you, they can be avoided. Oh, um, we'll check that out. We'll look into that. We'll, we'll get that information later. Now, here's the part that makes it not so easy. Not all questions are questions. That's the part that makes you nervous, right? So when you have your dissertation defense, I don't think you're afraid of questions, but you're afraid of questions that are not questions. Is it mean coming? Coming? Yeah, but they call it a question. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, let's look at some of these. These are very uh, interesting. Be prepared for comments from the audience that are not really questions. Okay? The audience will remember how you react. How you react is the key point to these comments. So the best thing is stay calm. Stay calm. Don't take a strong stand. Don't argue with the questioner. That's the key point. So let's look at this. Stay calm, you see. Not really questions. Maybe someone says they don't understand the presentation. That's possible. Question. I don't understand your point at all. <laughs> right? That's not really a question. Right? But this is often a question people ask. Right? They say, I don't understand anything you just said. I often do this when to students. I, say, I don't understand anything you just said. Answer. Maybe I haven't been clear. I can talk more with you after we finish here. <laughs> right? You see? So you don't need to answer the question because it's not really a question. Right? Dislike the presentation of the presenter. Here's the question. This whole topic is unimportant. <laughs> right? Or this topic makes no sense. Or, this topic is not useful. This is useless. And your answer? Thank you for that input. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a question, right? You say, okay, thank you. Sometimes the audience can disagree with the presenter. For example, I don't see how you can draw these conclusions. So remember, point one, point two, point three, conclusion, right? Mm -hmm. Walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it must be a duck. I don't see how you can draw these conclusions. How do you answer? This is what we have now. 
But of course, there could be something we missed. Maybe we can talk afterwards. Right? I would be happy to listen to some input afterwards. Maybe we've done something wrong. So, what's the process of these questions? How do we do this? Well, we have a kind of system we can follow. So, let's look at handling questions. Handling questions have two main parts. The first part is getting a question from the audience and showing your interest while you're thinking of the answer. So in this case, we need to invite questions. Tell the audience clearly that question time has arrived, right? Signal which person will take, you'll take a question from. So invite questions, and then later we're going to study give attention. Take notes, think, and then clarify question. These are really good steps. Let's go into this some more. So attention and notes. Now while someone is asking you a question, so they raise their hand, they say, I have a question, and you say, okay, sir, you have a question? While the question is being asked, you need to pay attention, right? Taking notes impresses the audience. So if it's really good to have index cards, because if you have paper, then again, it's the same thing. It's like, um, uh. but if you have index cards, you just pick them up and you're listening and you're writing. Even if you're not writing anything, you're just drawing a picture, <laughs> the audience will feel, oh, he's really paying attention. And then later you can say, you can say, well, we don't have that answer now, but maybe I can talk to you later. But that way they think you paid attention, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever does that. <laughs> we will have the answer now, so we will talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time to experience it. Yeah. <laughs> Eric will be in the presentation, and the, the press say, Let me see your notes. And Eric, Professor Warden told me nobody looks at the notes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> okay, good luck. <laughs> so, what do we do next? After we pay attention, you pay attention, maybe make some notes. What do we do next? Clarify the question. Clarifying the question is really great. And remember what I told you last week, I think? People can hear faster than they can speak. And this is the same idea. But someone asks a question, and you're listening, but because we're not always listening, we're like thinking of other things, like what's for dinner, what, is it raining outside? People always worry, did you hear me? Did you hear what I s asked? Did you get my idea? So clarifying the question means I listen to you carefully and then I repeat the question. This always works. This always makes people happy. Always. So if somebody asks them, they say, I don't understand anything you just said. And then you say, you so you don't understand anything I just said? <laughs> and they'll say, yes, I don't understand anything. And they say, oh. so everything I said you don't understand? <laughs> if you just do this, they will feel better. This will make them feel better. Think about it, right? Right? Because it, it tells them, I hear you. I hear you. Right? And remember, this is not a question. There's no way you can answer that question. You cannot say, well, I'm sorry, sir, but you're stupid. <laughs> you, can't, you can't say that, right? There's nothing, there's nothing you can say, right? Right? If your topic is wrong, you can't change it now. If the person is smarter than you and, you and you're stupid, you can't change that. If he's stupid and you're smart, you can't change that. There's nothing you can do but you say, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. So you repeat the main point of the question. This helps clarify the question and it makes sure you understand. Now, it may be more normal that someone will say, I don't understand anything you just said. And then you say, so you don't understand anything I said? And they say, well, not, e I mean, some things I do understand. I didn't understand part two. And then you say, ah, part two you didn't understand? Mm -hmm. You see, and then you make it more clear. So clarifying the question is always a really good way to move forward. 
If the questioner thinks you have misunderstood the question, he or she will ask again and they will try to explain more. So I always uh, watch our student's defense and number one, if the student has a pen and a notepad, this is a good sign and they write it down. Number two, when the professor has a question, they, con they, they repeat, they confirm it, right? They clarify it. So you mean the t-test should use the should use the standard deviation rather than the variance, right? And they say, yeah, right. So I always like that. Everybody likes that. Listen closely and once again repeat the question back. Ask the questioner if it was right, so then you can ask. Is that what you mean? Is that your question? Is that your point? Is, do I understand what you're saying? Once the question is clear, then you have to answer the question if it's really a question. If it's not a question, you can't answer, right? So let's look at some ways to invite questions. I'll take any questions you may have. I'd like now to invite any questions you may have. Thank you for your attention or thank you for your patience. Are there any questions? Now, I'll try to answer any questions you have question time. We have 10 minutes for questions. If anyone has any questions, I would be happy to answer them. So positive. We are short on time, but I can take two or three questions now. Starting question time, practice. Here's some practice sentences and same idea, right? Here's time for questions. I have a few minutes for questions. You may have some questions. How do we give attention? Yes, do you have a question? Sir, would you like to ask a question? Yes, madam, do you have a question? I think someone in the back has a question, yes? <laughs> right? Clarify the question, how do you clarify? So, what you mean is, so what you mean is, I think I see your point. You are saying that the question is, you told me, now I repeat it. I think this question is related to, is that right? I think this question is related to the sample size, is that right? Let me make sure I understand your question. Let me make sure I understand your question. And then blah, blah. I'm not sure I understand your question, but I think it is about, is that right? Okay, so let's look at some flow chart here on how we can handle questions. Handling questions part two, right? The second part of responding to a question requires you to stay positive, stay polite. Put the answer into context or what we call a frame. A frame is like a picture frame, a window frame, right? It's like, what is the situation of this question? What is the context of this question? Then you give the answer and then you follow up by checking. Is that okay? Did that answer your question? So let's look at some ways we can do this. If we have uh, we can accept criticism or accept praise. For example, the person will say, oh, you've done a good job. And you say, oh, thank you. Or they say, I don't understand anything. And you say, ah, oh, okay, I don't think I've been clear. Maybe I haven't been clear. Frame the answer. Frame it means you take their idea and then you put it into the context. So maybe their question is about, maybe their question is, um, uh, for your sample, how did you encourage respondents to answer your survey? How did you encourage respondents to answer your survey? So the people who answer your survey, how did, they, how did you get them to do that? You frame it by saying, oh, this question is about the, the sample, right? Sample. Uh, this question is about the uh, how we contacted the sample. Uh, this question is about how we rewarded the sample. You see, we put it into the bigger picture. That's called a frame. 
then you can do two things. You can answer the question or you can postpone the answer. So I could say, oh, we rewarded respondents with a $50 coupon. Or I can say, I don't have that information now, but I'm, I will get that to you later. Check back. Does that answer your question? You see? So there's these paths you can follow, these flows that you can follow that are quite helpful for question time. So accept criticism and praise. Thank you. Right? Thank you for that question. Thank you for that. Thank you for your input. Try to add a comment about the question, such as, that is a really good question. That is a really good question. Now, if you're making a business presentation, this is good. But if you're making a research presentation to your professor, this is not good. <laughs> because your professor will say, I know. <laughs> right? That's not so good. If the questioner compliments you, respond by thanking him or her. This is very normal. Occasionally, a question may be a criticism. It is bad to argue with the questioner. People in the audience will also feel uncomfortable. So it's pretty normal that somebody will be presenting and then somebody in the audience is a troublemaker. And that troublemaker will want to argue. Say, this is, your statistics is all wrong. You shouldn't do the regression. You shouldn't do the regression because the, the variables are already correlated. And then the person will say, no, they're not correlated. We test and they begin arguing. Mm -hmm. And everybody in the audience is like, oh. You know, they don't. They want to go, but they don't want to be rude and just leave. So they're waiting while these people are arguing, right? So don't argue, no matter what. Nobody likes it. Only, only the people you're arguing with, they like it. Nobody else likes it. Accept criticism positively, acknowledging it in a positive way. Always thank the questioner for giving you some feedback. So in these examples, well, uh, he or she wants to argue. I think I'm right. Uh, I think you're wrong. I think it's correct. And here you just say, oh, thank you for your input. Thank you for your observation. Thank you for that idea. That's a good idea. I, we will consider that. Thank you for that input. I'll go back and review our work with that in mind. So let me take your idea, let me go back, and let me look at it. I agree that this is a potential weakness. I agree. You see, if you agree, nobody can argue with you. You say, hey, Professor Warden, you're stupid. I agree. <laughs> you see, right? No one will argue with you. It's game over, right? <laughs> Clearly, you are right, and we need to consider this point. You're right. You're right, and we need to consider. You see, I don't say, you're right, I'm wrong. I just, you're right. That's a good point. Accept praise. Thank you for that compliment. We have done our best. That's a good way to do that. This is very, that is very kind, but I think we still have a lot of work to do. That's very, that's very humble, right? We still have a lot of work to do. I appreciate your positive feedback. Thank you. Okay, now, how do we frame questions? This is a little bit of an important skill to uh, undertake, framing a question. When a person asks a question, not everyone will understand the question. This could make the audience feel bored. And remember, the audience is not just the question person. There's more people watching, right? So how do you do that? Well, you frame it. So you take that question and then you say, oh, this question is about, this question is about methodology. This question is about the literature review. Now, this question is about our conclusions. So you take a small question and you make it into the bigger picture, the bigger frame. Explain the context of the question. So it will be answered so the audience understands, what is this? What are, what are they talking about? They understand the subject. All right, so here are some uh, example sentences that you can look at for helping you accept criticism, right? I will try to improve. I agree with you. We will look into that. I will look into that. Oh, I will look into this. I will check this out. We did not center on, we did not center on this issue. I will check that information. I agree. Your observation is quite good. Your observation is very good. Your observation makes a lot of sense. 
Your observation brings up some very useful directions for the future. That's very good, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. We've done our best. Thank you for your feedback. We still have a lot of work to do. This is an important point. Somebody says, this is an important point. That's an important point. We need to look into that in the future. Right? And nobody will argue with you. That's right. You're right. That's important. And in the future, we're going to study that more. Framing. How do you frame? While that's true, our emphasis has been on, so watch. While that's true, our emphasis has been on, so for example, maybe someone asks you a question and it's something like, um, well, your sample has, has almost everyone as a college student. And you say, well, that's true, but we were emphasizing college students' purchase, purchases. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> right, you see, right? This question is related to sample size. This question is related to methodology. This question brings me back to the research question. This question should be examined in the context of. So this is a great way to take the question and move it to be a bigger question. Bigger is better. Smaller is worse. Because if I ask you the tiny, tiny question, it's become harder and harder to answer, right? If, I, if you take my tiny question and you make it bigger, it's easier to answer. So maybe my question is, well, why is the mean, why is the mean age, blah, 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 and you, then you take it, oh, well, this is about the sample. <laughs> so for the sample, we try to do something for the, this. So you take a small question, you make it bigger, okay? Although this is an important issue, we centered on you you're right this is important issue but we centered on this your question is about this we centered on this but you you're right that's good okay so framing the question this question is related to something this issue is explained on page 25 where we can see questions like these are related to issues we didn't really deal with however let me try to answer while we don't know those results yet, I can speculate about the possible outcomes. We don't know yet. This issue is related to the accounting restraints placed on the project. Let me explain why this is important. Let me explain more. While we did attempt to follow these procedures, I tried that. We did try. Yes, your point is right. We tried to do that, right? There were some instances, as you point out, where we made modifications. So this is great. Yes, your point is right. We tried to do that. Eh, we maybe did not succeed. And then they go, oh, okay. <laughs> How do you postpone uh, questions or directly answer questions? Questions should be answered directly and clearly, of course, especially if they're from your, your boss, right? Some questions are very complex. Some questions can be long. Some questions require information, and you don't have that information with you, right? So how do you postpone them? Don't use too much time on one question. Even in your dissertation defense, if one professor asks a question, if you keep talking about that, you will use up all of the time. And because you keep talking about it, it's the other professors will not be very happy because it's something's wrong. That's why they're asking the question, something's wrong. Otherwise, they would not ask you the question, right? So you need to try to say something like, yes, you're right, and I will look into that. I don't have the answer right now, right? Or we tried to do that, but we did not succeed, right? Or, yes, I need to change those numbers, and as soon as I get that, I'll change it. And push. Does that, does that answer your question? And then push forward. Because other people will be like, oh, this is, this is taking too long. Right? And then lots of students I see make a mistake. Lots of students in their defense, they really try to answer very detailed questions. But the professor does not want you to answer. They just want you to know something's wrong. You see what I mean? And so you say, Yes, we tried to use a random sample, but 
we could not obtain a random sample and I will look at the data again to see if we can separate the sample. So I understand your point. I understand your point, and we will try. And that's, that's it. So lots of students, that's a mistake I see. Try to move forward and get other professors to ask their questions as quickly as you can. The answer, as best as I know, is, just answer the question, the best way to answer that question is, the answer can be seen here on slide 10. The answer is simple. The answer to that question is very easy. How do you postpone a question? Here are some samples. I don't have the details with me. I don't have those details. I don't have those figures. I don't have those numbers with me. I'll send them to you after the meeting. I'll send those to you after the meeting. I can email that to you after the meeting. This issue is a bit complicated. This issue is a bit complex. I think we are running late. May I discuss this with you another time? Now, of course, you cannot say that to your boss. May I discuss this with you at another time? Right? But it's very normal for colleagues or other people below you. The part you mentioned was actually completed by another person. This is very common. Ah, that question about this uh, sample. That was another person on my research team. I don't have that information with me, but I will try to get that later. <coughs> I'm not sure I can answer this question quickly and simply. Maybe we could meet after the session is over and we have more time. There is much more I would like to explain related to this question, but I think we're out of time. I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand the question. After the meeting, I can look over the details and get a more complete picture. This is actually not, this is normal in business. This is, it's not really normal. It's not so normal in business. You know where this is normal? In politics. This is what politicians always say. Oh, I don't really understand your question. Maybe I can look into it later. <laughs> right? The politicians always like to say this. What's that do? Postpone. Push it to another time. Check back with the questioners the last thing you do. So the very last step, make sure the person is satisfied. It doesn't mean make sure the question is answered. So some questions are not questions. You cannot answer every question. You don't have time. And some questions are not questions. But check back. Is that okay? Does that satisfy you? Did you get what, you, what you're asking for? Keep in mind that time is limited, right? This simply is to check. Just very quickly check. Did I get it? So what do you do? Does that answer your question? Did I answer your question? I'm not sure if that answers your question or not. And then they'll say, yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I hope that covers your question somewhat. I hope that question covers your question somewhat, a little bit. Is that what you mean? Does that address the questions you raised? Does that address the issue you raised? Is it clearer now? Is that clearer now? Is it clearer? Does that make it easier to understand? Does that make it better to understand? Okay, postponing. Here's some more samples, okay? Later, not right now. I look forward to talking to you. Let me talk to you later. Let me get back with you. Does that answer your question? Does that help? I hope that answers your question. I hope that help you understand. Okay, so that's our book all done, right? So, the thing about the presentation, to summarize everything we've learned so far. Number one, it's like a, like a map, right? Beginning, middle, end, right? What are the most important parts of the presentation? What's the most important part? The beginning, the middle, or the end? The most important part is the beginning, the middle, and the end. <laughs> Because you can't have an end without a middle. And you can't have a beginning without you know, a middle, right? You need to have them all, right? It doesn't make any sense. So you cannot give a presentation and you have no middle. You cannot say, ah, this product is great, so buy. <laughs> <laughs> right? You have to have the middle. 
But the middle is, is the hard part. It's the boring part. So we can say, which part is most important? None are most important. Which part is hardest? Probably the middle is hardest because people are beginning to slow down. You've got to keep them engaged and get ready for the ending, right? Key points at the very beginning, key points at the very end. So both sides, you get them. Get attention so they don't fall asleep. Get them again so they remember, right? And then at the very end, what's the, what's the key you want to have? The system at the end, the very, very end. It's a duck. It looks like a duck. It walks like a duck. So it's obvious. It's unquestionable. Right? It's indubitable. Right? There's no doubt about it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and look at yesterday's presentations.